Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is SamLet64 and welcome to the Robocast. I'm joined alongside... And there's 9132 Wars Guru. And Misha de Graaf, the team captain and driver of Team Petunia. And this is Hal Rucker from Team Black and Blue and our robot is Duck. Indeed, and Steve's in the car. <laughs> so he... I may be a little bit cutting out, but I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> he's, he's, he's about, he's about. Um, if I, I mentioned this briefly before we started recording this. You two were on the same episode last year, which I find kind of weird that you ended up together again. There's After... a lot of us out there, so this is true. Gonna, some pattern's going to emerge. This is very true. This is very true. Um, I'm going to start with Misha quickly. Obviously, uh, Petunia, Mark II, I suppose, at this point. Um, what was the, you know, the... The big changes that you made from the outside, it looks very similar. Maybe a little bit reprofiled at the front, but um, largely similar machine, or is it all new? Yeah, it's it's completely new, and I think it looks uh, rather different from the first one. Uh, the front scoop is a lot bigger, and uh, the claw is a little bit longer to uh, have more reach. Yeah. And on the inside, basically what we changed the most is the hydraulic system, uh, new valves, a new uh, valve system to make it close more quickly and the same power. And I have uh, different sets of claws that I can use. Awesome. Okay, those are the main differences. And uh, last year we start building the robot and uh, Along the way, we designed the, the logo, the flower with the teeth and the tongue. Yeah. And this year, I designed the robot more in uh, similarity with the logo. So the logo was this year the base for the shape and, and, and color of the robot. Yeah. So it's more in line with the logo this year. It's, pre it's pretty neat. I mean, you, know, I'll, I'll, you know, it's always a bit of a striking machine. Like with the, you know, obviously, we pull, pull the Dutch colors out as well with, with, the, um, with the design. Yeah. But um, you know, it was always quite a striking machine. It's it's you know, it's, it's, it, and I remember. I think I remember you saying even last year, like you started building in anticipation for this season. Then, so this, yeah. this, this you know, yeah. this one's a lot more preparation than say the previous one. Yes, yes, I almost immediately started uh, redesigning the the hydraulic system. <laughs> And to have a bigger scoop was also the idea. And I used to make uh, wooden models first, one on one scale, yeah. to fit fit uh, the parts in. So I spent a lot of time uh, designing the new uh, hydraulic system and to have it fit into the robot. And when I was satisfied with that system, I designed the rest of the robot. Very nice. And obviously it came out very nicely. Um, and obviously Hal coming to you, uh, Duck, Last season, we 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 did speak briefly. Um, we thought about maybe doing another podcast for the first episode this season, where um, or your first fight, even when you fought Bombshell in that uh, big rematch. Um, and you you you've, you've very kindly recommended for, for me to wait. I'm very glad you did, because <laughs> uh, this fight was something. We'll get to it later. Um, but duck. Um, well, the big changes, obviously, the, the the weapon systems are very different to last year. It's much more obvious. I think that's the, a good way of putting it. Um, talk us through it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Duck is also a complete rebuild from the ground up, even though it has similar looking parts. Uh, last season, our biggest problem, we had two big problems. One was our wheels kept getting knocked off. And the second was that the judges did not perceive our weapon as being active enough. Yes. So our two changes were to really uh, reinforce the wheels. We have bigger, stronger drive shafts. Uh, the way the wheels mount to the drive shafts is completely different. Um, and then we moved our plow axis of rotation to the center of the bot, so it's symmetric. And the plow can rotate 360 degrees all the way around the robot, so we can do a lot more with it. Um, and then, because making those changes involves adding weight, we had to be clever about finding other places to lose weight, and that was actually quite a bit of work. Yeah, I, I imagine. Obviously, the, the result is you know the new version of Duck, which obviously we've, we've seen fights already this season, getting the win over Bombshell, which we kind of said wasn't much of a fight, really. We kind of knocked him over, and that was that was job done. Um, did that feel good? I have to ask. We, we, haven't, we haven't spoken about uh, the 
the fight from last season, but like, was, was there a small part where you just thought, yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the bombshell match was a combination of relief and disappointment. Yeah. Because uh, they built it up so much yeah. um, that it created a lot of pressure for us to not suck, as <laughs> people say. <laughs> um, Using the Will well, Bales approach there. Yes, exactly. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, you put all this work into it and you're really looking forward to the three minutes of excitement and we didn't get that. Sure. Um, so it was a combination of feelings. Sure, sure. Right. And I hear that was the first fight they filmed. Yes, it was the first <laughs> fight of everything. Um, and the producers were a little bit disappointed as well that it didn't uh, have more action. I can understand why. Was over in 20 seconds, first part of the season. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't say it's not impressive. Yeah, yeah. true, true enough. Can I, mean... can I say one word? Sure, just, you can. Just, well, can. Just one word. Just one word. Shreemak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get it. But, uh, uh, they, they had the same problem last year. Yeah. What's what's wrong with the streamer? I th- I thought I thought it could self I thought that that like arm thing at the back was meant to be a self writer, but apparently not. No, no. no. Never mind. We'll, we'll we'll get to bombshell later. Don't don't worry. We we've, we've, we've got to talk about that this, uh, in in this episode as well. But uh, we'll actually start off with Hal again, and yep. um, what a fight! <laughs> First of all, <laughs> what a fight this was. It was just spectacular. I mean, obviously. You know all the hard work he put into Duck, and just to see it you know, torn piece by piece was amazing. And then you still end up getting the win. Obviously, we'll discuss we'll discuss that as well in a second. But um, talk us through the fight. Uh, well, we put our robot in the arena, and then we watched it get shredded for about two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we won. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, on, on TV, you get a pretty good sense of how hard we are being hit. Um, but when you're only a few feet away from it, it's pretty uh, genuinely frightening, um, especially the hit that ripped our plow off. Yes. Because yeah. if... cool. even on TV, you can see the plow's there, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> and... That's a, you know, that's 60 pounds of material that just got ripped off like it was, like nothing. Yeah, it was spectacular. Like the, the one, the, the hit that gets me. There's, there's a big hit where, the, um, where Cobalt launches Duck straight at the um, booth where the drivers are, and like you know, you see Dave and Sam kind of take a bit of a, a, um, you know, flinch a little bit. But the one before that where you get, I think, you get flipped over like three or four times in the air. That was amazing. Just like the amount of energy going on is just ridiculous yeah and it's in the air for so long that it's actually a source of frustration because you can't drive <laughs> yeah um and you're well, just sitting there with the controls in your hands wishing you could do something about it but you can't yeah yeah absolutely i mean you, you started very well actually you, you got the wedge in just so it, they couldn't quite get you and i thought i thought hello you know learnt from bombshell quite well there you know get, get the uh get the wedge in just where they they can't escape essentially and yeah i don't know if you noticed this but in both our first matches um we were well aware that there was a large seam in the floor that was perpendicular to the line between the red square and the blue square yeah so and it's the red square that hits the seam and it's the blue square that goes over it so we were very careful to just wait until they came into our half of the arena because we didn't want to get stuck on that um, against Cobalt, we were getting a little impatient, so we went and hit that seam, but didn't get stuck, and then backed off. And then as soon as they crossed it, that's when we went after them. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I suppose we better talk about the, uh, the Ellie bot in the room, which is the floor. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you said in the, um, I think you said in the interview afterwards that, like, you, you weren't happy to win that way. Like, you're, you're happy to win, but not sort of win that way. Is, is that... You know, obviously, you don't want to win by a technicality, really, do you? Well, there's a lot to talk about with the floor. Yes. Um, yeah. Let me give you my perspective. <clears throat> okay. Um, two, two different thoughts. One is the cliches, 
you make your own luck. Yep, yep. And every bot has at least one weakness. Um, and that's clear with Duck's strategy. We need to survive until our opponent's weakness reveals itself. So that's what happened. Um, Cobalt's weakness is that it's really low to the ground, and it got stuck, and we won because of that. And on the one hand, I feel like we got lucky, but on the other hand, I feel like Cobalt got unlucky. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, um, sure. So I do take some credit for surviving those hits long enough for their weakness to be revealed mm -hmm. oh definitely yeah um so that's one thought second thought is i've watched the video over a number of times now and it confirmed what i thought and perceived during the match which is if you watch it carefully they circle around they hit an imperfection in the floor they bounce off of it they don't get stuck on it they bounce off of it they stop, they twitch once, and then they don't move. Mm. So, ah, so at you the said moment, they died. At, my, at the moment, without any evidence other than what I was looking at, I thought they had died. I didn't mm. think that they were stuck on the floor. And when I watch the video, it confirms that possibility. I'm not saying it's really what happened, but if you watch the video, you see they're not moving it you know i've been stuck a lot of times and when i try and get loose and i'm cranking on the joysticks to try and do whatever i can to get loose you at least see some vibration in my robot as i'm yanking yep. and there's no vibration in their robot they're just perfectly still so that, and I'm that's interesting because you have cobalt is perfectly still when this is happening it's it's yeah. It's almost, it's almost like the, even the fact that they, even, even if they were stuck, they were just completely 100% dead. I didn't see their wheels moving at all. Right. So I'm not bringing this up to argue that they weren't stuck. I'm just bringing it up with uh, the discussion about what to do about it. Because if you're the referee looking at them, you think they're dead. and there's absolutely no movement, are they stuck or are they dead? And what right. do you do about it? Do you stop the fight and go nudge them and try and tell i mean there's nothing really you can do about it mm. so from my point of view in a situation like that no movement means no movement um no matter what's causing it yeah because um, you can't do anything else about it if if they were like their nose was stuck in the seam and they were wiggling and wiggling and they couldn't get loose maybe you should stop the fight and yank them out but when there's no movement at all, I don't. I, I empathize with the referees in this case. Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I can see what you mean. Like, if if they were, you know, as you say, twitching and you know, writhing to get free, then you'd say, okay, fair enough. You know, that, that's kind of really unlucky on their part. But they, you, you are right; they do not move at all. It's kind of, it's an interesting one to look at. To look at, obviously, you know, a lot's been said about the floor, and yes, it isn't. The, you know, it wasn't in the best condition. But as you say, give. The refs, you know, something to look at, so so to speak, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. As a wise man once said, "And if it can happen, it will happen." And I think, you know, something simple like you know them bumping into the floor, like you said, Hal. And I think that might be, you know, probably even just knock the wire loose, something like that. I mean, it just shows that something so small can literally end the fight just there and then, out of nowhere. And it shows that there's a lot more to robot combat than people give it credit for. A lot of people just say, "Oh, it's just literally." You have, all you need is a big, heavy, hitty weapon and you when you've won, but there's so many different contributing factors. And that's one of those things which is why I think that people don't respect drivers a lot. They see a robot driving badly, oh, that means that driver must be terrible. Well, hang on, for all you know, there could be three or four wires that have popped out of the circuit board, therefore it can't drive as well as it usually does. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. You know, and, I mean, right, I, I just want to make the point that I'm not... Cobalt's team is saying that they, it was the floor that got them stuck, and... Mm not saying they're right or wrong i'm not oh. questioning what they're saying um i just want to point out that they weren't moving enough for the referees to know what to do yeah sure like yeah, that's cool. no, no, that's don't, cool. don't they, didn't, they didn't put the element of doubt in their mind so to speak right right fair enough fair enough um anson i actually want to speak to you about what did you think of the fight itself awesome <laughs> i like my I, I, you know me i like my battles a bit more I, I mean no offense to hal here i mean I, I can understand that duck was definitely trying to attack but it was a bit one-sided at points obviously when you're taking damage and actual effectiveness of hits 
But for pure spectacle, this was fantastic. See, I mean, you know, again, no offense, Hal, but seeing you ever go flying through the air was pretty fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we know that it's a tough machine. So to be able to see, I mean, like I said, we've seen that thing, you know, withstand shots from Tombstone in the past, you know, Gigabyte. plus others. Yeah. Gigabyte, exactly. So to see, you know, a machine actually be able to rip off your front plow as it did, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I honestly wasn't expecting that. I thought, you know, if anything was was going to come off of Duck, it was going to be the wheels, because that's usually the seems to be, that's obviously the weakness. Um, And I was just, it was just, completely insane i could not believe how well they did against you and I, but at the same time i can't believe how well duck withstood that punishment because there was honestly a point where i thought if there's going to be a ko against duck this is going to be it yeah they were they were hitting us as hard as tombstone has hit us in the past but they did it over and over and over again <laughs> um <laughs> and I thought we were in control of the fight for about four seconds <laughs> when we tried to do our first flip, and I'm not sure why, but we somehow missed. And then, then we were just out of control. It, I mean, we weren't able to grip the floor long enough to drive to where we wanted to be. Sure. Yeah, it, it was it was quite spectacular for um, you know watching watching you fly through the air. I mean, uh, Misha, I don't know how much you would have seen of this fight in the in the pits at all, but. Uh... Watching it back, what did you reckon? <laughs> um, fights like this make me think maybe this is a good time to quit. <laughs> <laughs> um, or bring back Paul. The, 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 the bad thing with spinners these days is the, the gap between spinners and non spinners is becoming large. Uh, yep. You have to build something uh, defensive like Duck or an offensive, offensive spinner. It's hard to build within the weight limit a robot like mine, which can withstand hits like that and also have a, a, a good weapon. So, yeah. I mean, that's a very good point. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, but what, what can you do about yeah. a spinner like that? Build something like Duck or, uh, or, or build a spinner like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, uh, suggest you make a really, really good hammer bot. Uh, you stand no chance against something like Cobalt or Tombstone or you name them. Yeah, it was. It, it is you know frightening the amount of energy that they can put out. You know, especially as Hal said, you know, so frequently as uh, Cobalt was hitting as well. It's it, you know the, just the way that it was just it was systematic. Really, it was it was amazing. Yeah, in 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 the old days, you cut uh, uh, mostly three hits and then the spinner died. But those days are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, well, they keep spinning and they keep hitting and uh, and they're fast and maneuverable, uh, like like Endgame, which we going to see later. Yeah. Uh, it's it, uh, once it starts starts hitting, it doesn't stop. It yeah. keeps chasing you, uh, uh, well, while you're still in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. J juggling duck, it was uh, very spectacular yeah. to see. Um, yeah, but I, uh, I, I great respect for duck for surviving something like uh, that. Yeah, it, on that note... If robot um, that can survive something like that, it's duck. Yeah, yeah very true. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, what's the name of that other duck-like machine? Uh, breaker box. Might be similar to Duck, maybe. Yeah. How? Yeah. So uh, we've only we're only on uh, episode four, but I can make the comment that the spinners are universally getting so destructive that even if you win a match, to recover from it takes a lot of time and money. Um, the match with Cobalt, uh, when he hit us on the chassis. It just took out chunks of solid aluminum or, that were exactly the profile of their tooth. <laughs> it, so in our back, we have three-inch thick solid aluminum, and his tooth just cut right through it. Um, so what can you do about that? You can't solve it by using thicker wall sections because it'll still go through that. So do you make your robot out of a billet of steel? Well, if you do that... Um, you saw what he did to the plow, which is steel. He can go right through steel. Um, 
And he, uh, without giving anything away, he's not the only robot at the competition who can do that. Um, <clears throat> so even winning is expensive at this point. The answer is unobtainium, I think. Has to, has to be. Has to be. Yeah. Exactly. Um, obviously, it does leave you on 2-0, though, at this point, Hal. Obviously, um, started much quicker than you did last. I think you I think you, I think you won your first... Was it the first two fights you won, or was it just the one? I can't remember. Yeah, we were 2-0 and last year at this oh, point. You, oh, you were? Okay. Okay, fair yeah. enough. But, um, yeah, so you, at 2-0 again, you know, you're taking on two fairly dangerous machines in Bombshell and Cobalt. But my one question is, though, after, after this point, is do you actually have another plow? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you we can't use the one that we used against Cobalt. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't think so. It was, it was better there, on it. There, there is no machinery in the world. Well, there is machinery in the world. There was no machinery available to us that could flatten that plow. Fair enough. Um, uh, there was. <laughs> and, to your, and to answer your question, we I came have with, a ten ton press with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we came with three plows. Okay, okay. So we we we'll see the ducks uh, ducks face once again, uh, no, just staring at the opposition. We'll we'll see that later on in the uh, in the season. Yes, a freshly painted face. Excellent, good. That's what I like to see. Well, um, we'll move on then. We'll move on from. That was it, it. Was quite the fight, you know. Kicking off the fight with with that the um, the show with that was excellent. Good choice. Very good choice. Uh, uh, a couple, just two quick comments. Sure, One sure. is, I thought Kenny and Chris did a great job on that match. They yeah. they had some really funny comments, which made it even better. Yeah. Um. I forget the second one. Anyway, hats off to Chris and Kenny. They did a great great call on that match. We'll move on uh, to our next fight, which saw um, the aforementioned Bombshell uh, in its second fight uh, against Rotator, which still in that um, unusual kind of pronged design with the um, with the big undercutter. Um, and I was very impressed the fact that, you know, they, considering the amount of problems that they've clearly had with, you know, parts not being quite right and they're having to use this kind of alternate setup, which isn't their main go to guys. How well they actually did against Bombshell, you know, they, they they drove, you know, Victor drove it really well. He, you know, hit where he needed to hit. Um, I think he took one of the base plates off at some point. I can't remember when it was, but you, you see um, a panel fly out from underneath Bombshell when it's dead at the end. And again, you know, considering the the problems that they had, you know, they lost to Sawblaze. Okay, Sawblaze is very very good. You, you know, they've, they've actually started quite strongly when you think the issues that they've faced so far. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think Rotator. Uh, uh, we saw that last year. It's a very good machine. Yeah. Uh, I just keep thinking, where's the other half? Yeah. But, it's, it's, it's so strange seeing just the one side. It's just it's, the rest of it's just. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, but but it makes it interesting also because it's a very uh, um, shape shifting robot which can adapt to its opponent. Kind of like uh, Bombshell used to be. Yeah. And that's an interesting concept, I think. Yeah. You never really know what you're going to fight. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you cool. can adapt to your opponent. Yeah. Cool me, yeah, I heard, like, oh, I sorry, heard second, maybe third hand that the bar that he was using was actually much heavier than the discs he uses. Yeah. So he's going to hit and slightly harder then. Yeah, it seemed to in that match. It, it, it seemed really quite pokey to be honest with you like he, he was giving out some some big hits and you know bombshell was going flying you know, quite a lot but anderson sorry go on i was just going to say call me crazy but i actually quite like the half rotator look i don't know why i just think it looks nice it is, it, it, it's different isn't it you know it, I think it's, it looks it's sleek yeah it looks sleek that's what i like about it and i and of course you know me i mean i'm a sucker for undercutters yeah. so uh there's always that as well yeah absolutely you know they, they, they perform very well, considering you know, as I say, the, the issues that they faced. Um, shame again for Bombshell, though that you know, just they, they just can't seem to get a break. I mean, apart from when Hell's in the ring, apparently, but it's just they just can't, <laughs> they just can't seem to get a break. Well, but their robot got broke. Well, it did, yes. Not, it did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're they're, they're struggling. I, I I feel I feel really bad. I do. I feel bad for them because every year they come back 
with an improved or you know you know completely redone like and it's not like i mean a lot of machines like they, they get rebuilt from the ground up again but they're still virtually the same if that makes any sense like yeah, same sort of design they, or bob shall come back with something different every time yeah and it it just no matter what they do they just seem to conk out unfortunately so uh, we look forward to the Desperado tournament where they win. And uh, <laughs> to the top again this year. And, uh, announce Last Chance Rumble winner. Oh, sorry, Last Chance Rumble, sorry. There we go, yeah, there we go. Um, obviously, you know, you, you guys were around the Bombshell team in the pits. Obviously, Hal, I'm sure you have um, things you can say about Bombshell, which, we, you know, we can't air. But obviously, the, the stuff we can air, um, it's, you know, do, do you empathise that, you know, they've obviously had to go, go away and... You know they've come back and it hasn't worked out. Like whereas yours kind of has. You know you've you've won fights where, in this case necessarily you shouldn't have. You know Bombshell have kind of really struggled. Yeah, we've all been in a place where our robots aren't doing what we want them to do, and it just feels horrible, especially yeah. when it's being televised. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a lot of sympathy for them. Just the looks on their faces. I've been there. Um, on the other hand, remember last year they were zero and four and made it to the top eight. Yeah. So we're just in episode four, and anything can happen. There's, there's, a, there's a long way to go. There is a long way to yes. go. Um, Misha, yeah. obviously, I'm sure you can probably say the same thing, really. I, I think, I, I, you know, I'm sure you've, you've been in a situation where, was it, was it Series 7 where you, you entered and you couldn't come or something like that? And then, you know, I can't remember exactly. It was, it was a long time ago, but, you know, I'm sure you've been in the same position as, as the Bombshell guys. Yeah, you mean uh, the Robot Wars series yeah. nine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's really bad. Yeah. You you work, uh, you spend a lot of time and money on your robot, and you come there with a good machine, and something little, uh, yeah, puts you on the reserve list, and you don't get a fight. It's you go home without uh, without a scratch on your machine. Yeah. It's, uh, at least Bombshell uh, did have their fights, and yeah. who knows what is to come in this series. Uh, but uh, yeah, I know uh, how it feels. Uh, same with my fight, which we're going to discuss later on. Yes. It's about the same feeling. So. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll move swiftly on then from uh, Rotator and Bombshell, uh, and I believe it's, it's time for... Oh! It's, 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 fi- it's finally here. <laughs> Nelly, <laughs> it's fi- <laughs> it's finally here. <laughs> uh, the big purple bonker. It's finally here, and it's taking on uh, Rainbow, uh, the Russian entry. Um, Rainbow really surprised me. Like they they really hit quite hard. Um, and I, I you know I I'm, I'm kind of gutted for Nelly because obviously we, you know we we discussed when we did our preview. You know they kind of struggled to get there. You know they had to you know literally. I think they've sold vital organs at some point to, to pay their way. They, re- they they really, you know, had to dig deep. And then they get there in their first fight, they just get chewed to pieces by, by Rainbow. It's kind of a shame, really. But, um, Anderson, what did you think? Oh, I thought it was brilliant. I really, really did. <laughs> um, I, I, was, I was disappointed by Nelly because I don't know whether it was because they were having problems, like we said. But we saw the hammer twitch a little bit. It didn't look like it had that much power behind it. We didn't really get to see it, to be fair. But I was just impressed by how good Rainbow was. Because, obviously, I mean, we were expecting something from that from that bar spinner. But it absolutely wallied it. <laughs> and what surprised me was that it was, again, like these days, robots need to be quite quick. Rainbow, as they mentioned, is a bit of a slow machine compared to most these days, especially with such a big weapon like that. But they were able to outmaneuver Nelly and get around the back, around the sides, and just give all the good hits... <laughs> and I think the team are awesome as well. Just want to say that now. Uh, one Z's rule. We all yeah. know this. Yeah, it's true. And yeah, I mean, it's nice to see an LGBT carbide. It really, really is. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all, in all, in all seriousness, no. It was, again, this is very much spectacle. It, it was more spectacle than an actual battle because let's be fair, it was just them bullying, really. But it was, it was um, good fun to watch, nonetheless. It was a, uh, it was good fun. You know, I think, you know, both both sides. Bringing the elements of fun to the table. I mean, you know, Nelly. I mean, it, it, look at it. It's goddamn ridiculous. It's it's amazing. But um, yeah. I mean, obviously, you guys were in the pits. How, how did you rate both teams, uh, Misha? Um, it's a little. It's hard to say. Um, I saw rainbow testing, and I saw the weapon uh, was really, uh, yeah, really spins really fast. 
didn't know what to expect of the drive. Uh, uh, to be honest, it's not the most reliable robot, I think. Uh, and what I like to say is I really like that there are so many countries involved in this series. Yes. So having some Russians there, I was really uh, yeah, happy with that. And uh, about Nelly, I know the backstory about Nelly. They were also aiming for Robot Wars, but couldn't yep. make it. Yep. So uh, really fun to have them uh, at Battle Bus. Yep. Uh, I did not rank them top 16, but it is their first fight. Who knows what happens? But yeah, it, it's sad that your first fight is such a hard one like this. And yeah, they have a lot of work to do to make it to their second fight. Yeah. But uh, they have a great team behind it. And uh, it's a fun bot. Uh, they entered as a fun bot. So. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to see that hammer work. Yes. That, that was uh, the, uh, the only sad thing about this fight. It, it was a bit one-sided. Yes. It would, it would be nice to see, you know, it, it, a bit. A bit, a bit, it would be nice to see a bit of back, bit of back and forth. But obviously, you know, as, as you say, you have to remember it is this robot's first fight. You know, Rainbow is a bit more tested, and you know, it's, it's had other fights in Russia, I think. Yeah. yeah whereas, it did. Yeah. whereas uh, Nelly, this is straight out of the box, straight in. You know, and a relative, relatively inexperienced team, I suppose you could say as well. You know, the, they've, they've got the, the featherweight Nelly as well, um, which I know that Sarah had insomnia last year. I, you know, I'm fairly sure this is. A lot of the guys is first heavy, so there is that as well. Um, Hal, anything to add to this fight? Uh, yeah, uh, one observation is that both teams seem to be genuinely really excited to be there. Yes. And that's a fun energy to have in the pits. Um, and then a nice little behind the scenes tidbit is if you noticed uh, after the match, when they were being interviewed, uh, there was a woman standing there translating for them. Yes. Yeah. And that is Julia, and Julia was on my daughter's uh, team. Oh, really? So she's Russian but lives in Canada, and she's really, really great. She was a gr really smart engineer and great in the pits and fun to be with. Excellent, excellent. Oh, no way, that's great. I actually didn't know that. Okay, cool. So, um... Yeah fair, yeah, fair play to Rainbow, obviously picking up a, a good win and uh, as ex excellent translating skills for the uh, for the Rainbow guys as well with with uh, I can't, it was Ju uh, Julia, was I think it was her name, was, was it? Sorry? Yeah, Julia, uh, I'm going to mess up her name. Uh, <laughs> Chernashevich. That was a good attempt. It was probably better than I could have managed. <laughs> yeah, well, Sorry, Julia, I'm just too old to get complicated names. <laughs> <laughs> We'll settle with that. I think that was a very valiant effort. I think we'll we'll go we'll go with that. Is that, uh, what, is that what the robot's called duck? It's only four letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was called duckling, but I couldn't handle it. Oh. <laughs> it all makes sense now. You've been exposed. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, dearie me. Right. We'll um, we'll move on. I think it's, we'll leave we'll leave that right there. We'll move on. Uh, to our next fight, which escapes me. I've probably got it somewhere written down. I need to remember to Quantum cut this bit. Versus Lockjaw. Quantum versus Lockjaw. Quantum versus Lockjaw. I'm going to sit. I have to fight, I have to fight the card uh, next to me. Because, I'm, I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to seamlessly cut this out. It's going to be amazing. See, no one's going to like see this, it. Right. Misha, a guest, comes more prepared than we are. <laughs> Misha, <laughs> mate, Misha, Misha's taken over. Misha's, Misha's going to be the new host. <laughs> I can tell Spring you who won if you need fight. some help. <laughs> no, I, got, I got it. I got it. All right. I've actually um, because I, I accidentally closed my Chrome tab and I didn't mean to. And I had it, had it, had it all open. I was like, oh yeah, I'll be really prepared this week. Oh wait, no. <laughs> right. So we'll move on then to our next fight. Uh, which actually, we'll, we'll talk about the the little segment that Quantum had first. And it was quite a long segment. It was you know telling them you know what it can go through, what the what the art crushing arm can go through, and you know, obviously, Misha, you have a crusher. Yeah. How you know what? What's like? How do you compare Quantum to yourself? Like, in, in like you know, what's what's the scale? <laughs> um, I was expecting this question, of course. Of course. Every, everybody does that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the only 
compared to you can make is that they're both hydraulic crushers. Yeah. But Quantum is built by uh, two guys who are very experienced, uh, who are engineers, who have tools I can only dream of, and a budget mm, 10 times or more than I have. Sure. And if you want to compare those two robots, you have to take these facts also into the comparison. Because uh, uh, we had some some materials cut and bent for us this year, but last year we did everything by hand, and uh, also this year we could have done that. But my robot is basically a hand-built robot. No computer uh, machine uh, gets involved. Only in the design process I use uh, Illustrator program. That's the only thing, and, and my laser cutter, but it's not uh, meant for metal, just wood. So my wooden models are laser cut, and that's about the only computerized uh, thing I use building my robots. So they're, they're literally it's like, a complete they're, they're, opposite yeah, of yeah, exactly. quantum. It's, it's, it's uh, literally nothing, nothing alike then in that case, because like, obviously this is, you know, way, way, way high-end, you know, materials and, you know, building practices so to speak isn't it you know whereas yours is very much you know like a simplified version essentially yeah yeah uh, but i think my robot is uh a better protected against spinners they think... have five millimeter t titanium up front and we have eight millimeter hardox 500 so that's a big difference yeah uh i use two pumps to drive uh, the the weapon yeah uh, the big pump is only for the speed closing it fast and then a small pump takes over for pressure and the big pump I use for the speed they use for pressure also so they use one pump the same size as my big pump but that involves a big motor to run it yeah. and they told me it's about 10 kilos that motor alone and my motor is a half a kilo so I can use a nine and a half kilo for uh, defense Basically, uh, my robot can do the same as Quantum in, uh, in force on the teeth, only yeah. slower because uh, my, my beak closes fast and then it switches over to the small pump and then it goes very slowly. Sure. So that's, that's, that's the main difference. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm, their I'm, robot is four wheel drive, so yeah. that, that's, that's a big difference of, difference, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. They have to use a three mag, and mine is partly invertible. So that that's the choice I made. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to come to how quickly because obviously um, Quantum uses a lot of um, machined parts. Obviously, you know, I don't know how similar it is in terms of machining techniques. It's very, very different. You know, the the whole head sculpture. You know, how complex is that? <laughs> Uh, the main difference between us is the head sculpture because they're using a new technology called generative design. Yes. Which is just so friggin' interesting. You know, that you, you, you design by putting in the parameters and the computer generates the design. And isn't it so cool that it ends up looking like what nature would do over, you know, a hundred million years? I was, like, like the, the way you described it, that it, it sounds very scary. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> like it, it sounds like you know very science fiction, but I suppose it is really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's so interesting. I, 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 after seeing that, I, I'm already starting to get into this whole notion of generative design. Sure. It, it, it's AI for what CAD is, what we've been doing in CAD, and the idea of it is just fascinating to me. Yeah, it's 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 a beautiful work of art, isn't it? You know, we've. we've We've said it already that quantum's just a spe spectacular looking machine and it, it is basically art um we'll talk about the fight briefly um quantum couldn't quite get a hold of lockjaw i thought Lock in this you know whereas in the first fight you know lockjaw wasn't driven at its best i think this was donald hudson fully on it and this was a, a master class in how to deal with quantum it was just it was driving rings around it it was spectacular yeah uh, yes, Donald knows what he's doing. Yes. Um, he also got a little bit lucky on that first pinch. But to his credit, uh, after that moment, he he drove really well. Yeah, yeah, Anderson. Oh yeah, you see, this was um, I I was, I'll admit, I was very impressed with the driving because you know me, I like 
driving control. Um, I, I think it's a very important part of robot combat, and I find it very entertaining to watch. I was a little disappointed with how quick the fight was. I was expecting a bit more, you know, because we all know how good Donald is, and obviously, quantum, you know, revolves around to have, you know driving control and all that. So I was expecting a bit more back and forth from it, and unfortunately, we didn't get that. But fair play to Locked Jaw. It, you know, it's a good machine, very well driven, better robot on the day. Obviously, UK robots are still better, but um, <laughs> for the, but you know, for the time, fair play to Quant. I'm uh, sorry to Locked Jaw and Donald Hudson, definitely. I just like I said, I would have liked it to go on a bit longer, but you can't control these things, unfortunately, can you? So no. there we go. I'm surprised that Quantum. Um, the, the the issue that I, I thought they that, you know they were really struggling with was you know how low those you know scraping wedges were on on locks, or they they just kept getting under every occasion. It was you know Quantum's. Um, wedges on a hinge because it was it was going underneath its body the whole time, and yet locked jaw every time was lower. It was crazy, absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, does anybody know? Does anybody know why Quantum stopped? What was their failure? Well, I know they have a, a you know they, I think before they've they've thrown out a few drive chains uh, in King of Bots, but I don't think it was a drive chain. I have no idea. Do you know? It's because, it's because it got twatted. <laughs> <laughs> and it. I mean, do, you, do either of you guys know? But it, it, it completely stopped also the hydraulics because they oh. have a stream mech and that uh, didn't work also. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, they yeah. didn't. Because they, 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 the reason why they lost was because they didn't self right. But I'm guessing there was a complete immobilization over the whole yeah, robot. I, well, I think so. I, I, obviously, there was a, this whole big debate about links versus switches. I know, I think Quantum does use a switch. I don't so. know that. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, if Robo Challenge, if you're out there, let us know why did you die, or maybe we'll find out later in the season. <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? Well, you know, it is you know spectacular to see that you know Quantum, you know this massive high tech machine is you know beaten by Lockjaw um, and Donald back of one on one. Obviously, Quantum is as well. Um, we'll see, you know, we'll see how good Lockjaw gets on. You know, they, they've started a bit bit surprised than they did last season, so we'll, we'll see how capable they really are. Uh, we'll move on to another crusher, which is Amisha's, <laughs> in in Kraken, uh, and um, Matt Spurk taking on Al Kindle's blacksmith in the the fire the fire match of the night. Um, yeah, def- definitely battle of the night. This one. This, no, this, this was brilliant. Was on, this was but, brilliant. I'm, I'm, you know the the driving of both of these guys. You know back and forth the whole time. It was it, it was a good fight. You know it, it shows that you don't need your big spinner to to have a great fight. You know this was a great back and forth between. Two different ideas, you know. Crack and- yeah, that, 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 that's what I meant earlier. The cap between spinners and non-spinners has become so Very big. Right. And yeah. when you have two non-spinners fighting each other, you can fight like this, or yeah. can get a fight like this. That, that's that's what I meant. Yeah, absolutely. it's more equally, uh, and, and it gives better fights when robots are equally matched. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, and it was it was a great fight. You know, blacksmith, I think. You know, started the stronger, and I think did deserve the win, but it was close. It could, like, it this, this could have, this could have gone either way. Yeah, I, I, I thought Kraken won in my what I remembered, but I, I was wrong. And when seeing the fight, yeah, I think Blacksmith earned it. Earned it. Yeah, Anderson, you were going to say. I was just yeah. I mean, it, it could have gone either way. And to be honest, had Kraken won, I wouldn't have objected. Honestly, both robots deserve to go th- to get the win here. I mean, this this ticks all my boxes. You know me, a good, you know, back and forth fight. Check two very different stars are what giving it their all. Check both robots actually getting some legit dangerous and serious attacks on each other. Check spectacle. Check damage. Check aggression. Check you know chaos. You know spectacle. <laughs> all of it was in there. Absolutely fantastic. In my opinion, not only was it Battle of the Night, it's actually it could probably even be Battle of the Season for me so far. This was that good. Oh really? It, it was. Yeah. It was. It was very good. Like, I, you know. I can't. I can't say that for certain because I've got the memory of a goldfish, so I can't remember every fight that's happened before this one. So, but you know, it's it's got to be up there, definitely. Though in the top three of the season so far, easy. Yeah. Um, Hal, I don't know how much you would have said of this fight, um, whether it was filmed before or after your fight with Cobalt. I imagine if it was filmed afterwards, then you're probably a bit preoccupied. But um... Did you? What did you reckon of the uh, the showing, at least on TV? Yeah, in fact, I didn't see any of these matches until I saw them on TV. Oh right, because uh, <laughs> because of the cobalt uh, damage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was busy. Yeah. Um, I would take it 
the the last comments a step further and say this match and the combination of other types of matches during this episode made it a really great episode. Um, like I mentioned, Ken, Kenny and Chris were on their game. There were lots of different types of matches. You know, my match, which was just abuse and then a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, this driving match that we're talking about now with two different types of robots that went at it. Um, the matches that follow were really great. I, I this was like the best in my mind, the best BattleBots TV show can be. It it just was a really fun episode. I had people over watching it with me who knew about the show but weren't deep deep fans like a lot of us are. Sure. And they were totally enthralled the whole two hours. It was it was just a great episode. Yeah. It was it was great, you know. The, the as you say, you know, the, the the so far this for me this has been the strongest episode of the season. I know Anderson uh, still thinks the first one was better, but I you know I really enjoyed this one. Only marginally. <laughs> but you know, the, and this I think this fight was for me was the as you say the fire of the night. It was just you know there's just so much going on. You know, Blacksmith's always great to watch in the arena. I mean, who doesn't love a giant flaming hammer? But you know, Kraken really gave it to them. You know, you know, we had Matt on earlier in the season. You know, I have to give him a big, big, uh, big round of applause for this fight because he he drove Kraken so well, and it, it's it, it's really turning. You know, it's turned from you know a bit of a novelty. You know, oh look at this very silly looking crusher to oh this is actually quite serious now. <laughs> it's actually a very very competent machine. Yeah, I agree. And it's one one of my favorites. Blacksmith always been my favorite. Yeah. Because of the flaming hammer, but it's sure. it's, it's awesome. So but sorry, Kraken, sorry. Kraken just yeah, as you said, uh, last year uh, it was low ranked and it it drove its way up to uh, a competitive machine. Different yeah. different style of crushing with the airbag and uh, yeah, it's maneuverable, it's fast, it uh, can do the backflip like Petunia could do last year. Yeah. I don't know if it's designed that way. I think so. I, I remember but... him, um, commenting somewhere that you know it's it it hasn't got a true Shremek. However, it, it, if it gets nudged anywhere when it's on its back, like in any way, it will fall back on its wheels. So it, it, yeah. it, it's it's very similar to Petunia in that way. Yeah, yeah. Can I just uh, can I just say by the way that flaming hammer sounds brilliant when Misha says it. <laughs> <laughs> Please say it again, just so we can hear. Well, I once wrote, it's not a flaming hammer, it's a freaking jet engine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, um, we'll move on to uh, God in Incarnate, which is Ribot, obviously. Uh, <laughs> there, was this, there was this great segment as well with the, um, the Ribot team, you know, how, you know, how they make their feet. You know, and they, they make new feet for each fight. There's just loads of dismembered frog legs just like in the pits in BattleBots or something. You know, it's... it's uh, it's great fun, but I had I did not have Ribot down to win this. I know we, we, we discussed that you know underneath it's very sophisticated robot with a very silly little frog over the top of it. But to beat Endgame, which I had down to be a serious top sixteen, you know, <laughs> high end machine, I'm just I, I'm I'm dumbfounded. Ribot is amazing. I love it. <laughs> it's just Absolutely. it's just so good. And again, this was a close fight until obviously the KO. You know, yeah. both row. I mean, it wasn't a case of like again, you know, literally end game did everything and then got unlucky and died or got stuck or anything like that. This was a good both robots going at it, balls to the wall. I mean, you know, both spinners connected at least what three, four times. Yeah. I mean, you know, and the and the robot team, you know, they didn't they didn't let off. They didn't run away. They kept going. It was basically either do it or die trying. And you have to have respect for the team for that. And to be honest, seeing them celebrate the way yes. they did was fantastic as well. That was great. Absolutely you know? brilliant. You know, it just it's what the sport's all about, in my opinion. You know, it's it's it, yes, okay, it's about machines destroying each other, but it's about people getting together, having fun, and enjoying themselves as well. And I, I, I actually that's one thing I really do like a lot about this season of Battlebots. We see a lot more of that side of it. Yes, I, you know, the, the, I know we, we mentioned it earlier in the season that you know the the, the pit segments of the Jenny were really really solid parts of the show, but th no, this in this episode, you know, she was very good with the the robot team, and I, I'm still I still can't quite believe it. You know, Endgame is like a proof. Like, it, it was very good last season. You know, it's it's come back and it's better. And it, I, the fact that it's zero and two, I, I I just find staggering. You know, that they've 
they've not been bad. <laughs> they've just been fairly unlucky. I, you know, I don't know what you know, Misha and Hal, I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Ribbit is a very underestimated robot. Underneath that foam is a really tough, uh, also um, adjustable machine. I think they brought four weapons. Yeah. Lifter, uh, horizontal vertical spinner, and something else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I saw, and I'm, I'm not spoiling anything with that, them uh, testing in the test box, uh, driving straight up on two wheels. So they have some sort of gyroscope in it, and that was amazing. It was uh, balancing on two wheels for about a minute or more. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. Uh, it, it is somewhere, uh, Ribot testing, and then you see that. So there's more to that machine than, than it looks like underneath that foam. And they were behind me uh, with the photo shoot, so I could take a good look at it. And I already saw it was tough. Uh, it was tough build, but yeah. I didn't know how how it would perform because it was new. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, don't underestimate that. But yeah, uh, how anything to add to report? Well, it in both of Endgame's first matches, uh, it went up against another vertical spinner. Yep. And. When you have two vertical spinners hitting each other, uh, there's a lot of kinetic chaos and energy that's out of your control. So I think there's a little bit of luck involved or um, lack of luck in Endgame's case because it's a great robot and uh, it lost both times to another vertical spinner. Um, I did get to see uh, under the under the toad of Ribot and... Um, it's it's a big massive billet as well. Um, it's very it's very well made. Yeah, it's it's a spectacular machine, you know. It, it, and I, you know, I love the fact that you know they they could have you know made it like a, a, an ultra serious you know spinner you know killing machine like like a bite force you know which obviously they uh, I think they're from the same college as Paul is, but um, you know they they, they thought nah, do you know what styrofoam frog. Let's stick that on top. That'll be much more fun. <laughs> it's it's great. It's great. Um, I suppose we'll come to the main event between Tombstone and Sawblaze. And this was the best main event so far this season, hands down for me. Yeah, same same here. Easy. And I've I Sawblaze were very unlucky. They they had they had right. Tombstone. I'm, I'm not going to say on the ropes because it, it wasn't on the ropes. But they had control of it, and I thought, you know, they they just doing doing enough, doing enough. That poorly timed pulverizer shot. I don't know who's which side did it, but um, it just missed, and it, it allowed Tombstone to get out and like kind of spin up and get ready to go. And I think that's what lost it for Sawblaze. It was it, it was a good fight even still, and you know the bit at the end where Sawblaze was just cutting into its own wedge, I thought was very funny, but. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> You can see where the battle turns around, literally, because this is interesting. Because once again, this is very this, this was a very close, even fight. But unlike most battles like that, where you know it's back and forth, this was one half was Sawblaze, the other half was Tombstone, and you can see where the um, where 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 it literally changed. Was literally it was a, again Sawblaze went in, tried to scoop them up, and ju- literally a millisecond of difference, they just turned at the right time and just caught the wheel yeah. of Sawblaze. Once that was done, there was no way that Sawblaze could go in a straight line, and they were just sitting there ready to be eaten alive then, yeah. which is a shame. Um, but again, you can't take it away from Tombstone. No. But what was it, 14 KOs now? Yeah, 16, I think. 16, sorry. Yeah. 16 KOs. I mean, that's, that's just daft. That's fight force level <laughs> daft. I'm sorry. You know, it's. it's you, have, you have to think as well, like, you know, like the reaction on Ray's face when Sawblaze got him, like you, you can see, he was worried. Like Sawblaze is a very competent machine, and, you know, it's very, it's very well driven. Jameson's a fantastic driver, as we've said before, and it, it, it's so, it, it, it's just nearly got it, but it just couldn't quite handle uh, Tombstone for, you know, a, a little bit longer, and then yeah, not too gone. So sorry to all the social mediaites out there who are like, "Oh, Tombstone owned it with ease." Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was struggling. It was a lucky. Well, I wouldn't say lucky hit because it was obviously purposely done, but you know what I mean. There was fortune behind it. Shut up! 
yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it wasn't an easy win by any means, but uh, you know, Tombstone when when Ray, they turned it on, Ray Blinks himself said it wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, when 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 Tombstone turns it on, though, I mean, it really turns it on. Um, obviously, I think how we, we, I think you were on last season when we actually spoke about your fight with Tombstone. Um, how, how like could could there, is there anything more that Sawblaze could have done in your eyes? I've fought Tombstone and uh, the Robo Games and, uh, version of it called Last Rites a few times. And I've learned something about it that um, people don't talk about, which is the, the most difficult moment when you're fighting Tombstone is right after a hit. Because you can position your plow or your wedge to be in the right spot but at the moment that happens uh there's chaos you can't control where you're going to be right after you've been hit um so that's in my mind has always been the most difficult challenge is you can survive a hit but the millisecond after that you can't control what happens and if you watch a lot of tombstones matches that's when his opponent loses is they're turned around the wrong way and they don't have time to recover or, you know, tombstones in some crazy orientation diagonal to the floor and nobody knows what's going to happen. Those are the moments that you can't control and those are usually the moments that beat you. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just so, you know, you think, when you think you've got the upper hand against tombstone, that's generally, like, I found when people lose. <laughs> You know, you cannot write it off for a second. You know, Saw so, so Blaze in this occasion, it, it, it did have the upper hand, but it just, just, just fell a bit short. Um, Misha, anything to add to this this one? Um, yeah, I think uh, Tombstone is uh, doesn't get the easy wins anymore. It's becoming tougher, and uh, there are a lot of robots which I think they might be able to beat Tombstone. So it makes it interesting. And uh, at the beginning of this fight, I thought, well, uh, Saul Blaze can actually do it. But unfortunately, uh, the damn bar keeps on spinning, doesn't stop. <laughs> and all you need is one hit at the wrong place and then it's over. So yeah, but it was a good fight and a, a very good start. And if somebody could have done it, it would have been Saul Blaze. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, it's you know, so, so place I think is is the right design to beat it, you know, and I think the 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 form that they used, it, I think they used it against Rotator as well with like the, the two flanges, the um the HDPE or UHMW um side uh, pieces to hold things in place. I thought that was again really well deployed, but Tombstone in the end just just keeps on uh, it's it's relentless. It, it just keeps on getting wins from somewhere and. Uh, Two and zero again this season. It's looking like it's well on the way to to getting into the top sixteen. But obviously, there's a long way to go, as we've already said. So that brings to an end episode four. But there is one more fight we must discuss. And uh, Misha, you've been very patient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your fight with Warhawk. Uh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> I, I I was so gutted. Yeah, uh, I was also because. Um... Well, we took took a lot of time to build this new robot, but in the end, uh, uh, you wait till you get selected before you start to invest your money in the project. So eventually, we had a few weeks to build a new robot, but that was mostly the, the just the frame and the body. Uh, the hydraulics uh, they did work, but we had a little bit problems with uh, the the controls. Um, and the drive system is basically the same as last year <laughs> and that was what failed during this uh, match uh, during the testing there was nothing wrong and uh, during the showboat before the fight there was nothing wrong and when the fight started I immediately felt hey this is not not the way it should be and uh, after I I hit him once, I cut under it, and then when you watch the fight again, you see me suddenly go in circles. So one of the wheels stopped, and at that moment the fight was over. Yeah, 
when yeah I, I, as i said to hell uh, in the pits i was a sitting duck at yeah. that moment yeah i mean it was, it was kind of sad really because warhawk i think as well was struggling with their um with their own changes i think they, the the wedge that's were kind of scraping it against the floor again quite a bit struggling to get going yeah they, they had problems also uh to be honest i expected a lot more from warhawk i expected something like endgame but uh, no, it, it, it wasn't Warhawk I, I expected. So uh, let, let's just say if, if both the robots uh, would have done what they should have done, the outcome would have been the same, but we would have seen a much better fight. Yeah. That's my opinion. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the vertical spinner was always a tough opponent for me. Uh, I can get underneath Warhawk, you have seen it. So. Uh, yeah, but if they drove the way they shoot, but the, the, the Chris and Kenny said at one moment they were uh, carefully uh, uh, aiming. Uh, I think they were struggling. It, it, in my in my memory, it all went very slow. I, I could see their moves, I could see it coming, but I just uh, did not have the ability to to react because only one wheel worked. Yeah. So you cannot do much and that's also the reason why the self-riding uh, was so uh, such a struggle uh, when i uh, land on the backside on both wheels and they both work then i can self-ride but with one wheel it just doesn't work yeah it was, it was a shame really because you know uh, you know i think it's fair to say that in this in this fight the the most effective robot was definitely war stop um you know there was there's just a you know, general issues for, for both yourself and, and Warhawk, but you know, it, it's one of those you know new, new bot problem things, you know it, 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 you don't really know what's going to happen until you actually get in the, the arena and, and fight it out, it's it's happened before it'll, it'll, I dare say it'll happen again to other teams so, yeah it's it's just one of those unfortunate things um, Yeah, and uh, losing a fight isn't so bad, but not having a fight at all, yeah. as you mentioned before, sure. uh, and and that's what this is. We didn't have a fight. Yeah, it it, it wasn't. Uh, and then yeah. and most of the time, when when I noticed one wheel didn't work, I was focusing on my own robot. Uh, what can it do? I I didn't even focus on on Warhawk or Warstop. Yeah, because I was busy uh, trying to get my robot to, to do something, and eventually I I stopped uh, controlling it. To uh, to make them uh, stop uh, attacking me. Yeah, so you would uh, take more damage. Was no use. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's count it out and uh, try to fix the problem for the next fight. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. That's that's. I mean, at that point, there's not much more what you can really do um, other than preserve and hope for the next fight. Um, yeah. Anderson, anything to add? Uh, it was just, it was, a, yeah, again, it, um, you know, a disappointing fight, but you can see why it, happened, why it was disappointing. Obviously, there are these unfortunate niggles that happen. Um, I, I, I'd rather not want to sound horrible here to, to Misha, obviously. You can kind of see why this wasn't picked to be a televised fight. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I just hope that Petunia, I mean, obviously, this is past tense, but hopefully Petunia can come back and uh, at least get one win this season. That would be nice to see. Because uh, it's 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 a shame when when you see a robot lose every fight, and it's like you said, like me said, it's even worse when you see a robot not even have a they actually go out there and just not do anything or not do what it's supposed to do and not even have the fight. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, it'll be better for him later on in this season. Yeah. Um, how anything more to add, or has it all pretty much been said? Uh, I don't I don't have a lot to add. He has yeah. much better insights into the yeah. match than I do. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. That um, brings us then. No, I, wait, one, oh, oh, one oh. tangential comment. Sure. Little mini bots really bug me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't think they should be legal. No, no really. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a roboteer, and even I don't like them. So you, you don't worry. I'm on. I'm on Hal's side here for this one. <laughs> they yeah. should no, at no, least no, be no, required no. to have an active weapon. The, the, the way I look at it, right, is it's not one robot it's two robots you know there's cluster bots as we used to have all multi bots where they're literally two halves that are like the same or whatever or in um going going back a bit here me sure know about this one obviously uh but you beat them there was v3 which was like a three-way one which looked like an f1 car when it was in the dutch robot wars 
and they they all make one big robot. That's fair enough. But when you've got literally one heavyweight and then one tiny little thing that just runs around, I just I don't think that's fair at all. That's not that's not one robot. That's two robots entirely. Yeah, and it it just never really adds anything to the match. It's just an annoyance. It's like you're fighting a match and there's a mosquito bugging you during the match. It yeah, uh, it's just a personal thing. I just don't like them. Yeah, I, I don't like them either, but I don't agree about they should be banned because yeah, there's not a rule that says you can have a minibot. There's one thing I like to add. Uh, a lot of comments uh, I read is, ah, this is the first minibot that is actually doing something. But keep in mind, my robot had already stopped. Yeah, very true. Uh, if I kept on moving, it would be uh, different. I mean, so, it's a really yeah. well-made minibot. It's just. Uh, mini- I, I I heard it had magnets to uh, attach it to the floor, and that's yeah, why that's, it's so strong. Yeah, that team has been developing that technology for years now on on small bot competitions, and it's an amazing. It just moves in some weird, crazy insect way, yeah. um, <laughs> which is great if you want to fight another bot of that size. It just. Well, I've said what I've said. It's it's just annoying. If if, if frustrates you when you when you're fighting the big boys. Yeah. Fair fair enough. Fair enough. Well, maybe we bring a mini bot also next. Year. <laughs> like yeah. when you multi bot multi bots are great. Lock the big it's spinner and bots. then uh, cross it. <laughs> uh, so so make the uh, make a, t- a tiny little uh, like yeah, know, and, be and like spinner. A, a little entanglement bot that that catches the spinner. Yeah, could be could be an idea. Yeah, two two mini bots which are connected with a chain or a cable and then drive <laughs> into the spinner. Oh yeah. uh, dear, maybe maybe one day. Fingers crossed. Well, yeah. um, that pretty much sums up uh, our thoughts on the fourth episode and obviously Beach's fight on the Science Channel and uh, for episode three. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you both on again. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I hope to be uh, back after yeah, our absolutely. possible next fight. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this was Thank fun. You. Thanks for including me. Anytime, anytime. Well, um, obviously, unfortunately, you, you may have noticed we lost Steve halfway through. He was busy driving somewhere. He's he's probably about somewhere. I don't know. He'll be, he'll be fine. But um, we'll we'll leave things there. With that said, I've been Sam at sixty four. I've been Anson nine one three two zero was Guru. And this is Hal from Team Black and Blue. And this is Misha from Team Petunia. And uh, myself and Anderson will see you next week for the fifth episode review, and we'll see you for that. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Toodle.